Hello, so I was asked to do a quick tutorial on how to turn one of the therapy approaches that I had put up into a telehealth version, since most people are doing telehealth right now for therapy. So specifically, I was asked about this predictogram and how we would turn this into a telehealth-friendly um, way of using it for therapy because the way that I had shown it in the video was a piece of paper with post-it notes. And so obviously that's not an option for a lot of people right now. So I'm just going to show you a quick tutorial on how I did that. So just for those of you who haven't heard of a predictogram, this comes from the book Language Disorders from Infancy through Adolescence, Listening, Speaking, Reading, Writing, and Communicating. The lead author on that was Rhea Paul. So that's where this idea came from. And what this is, is it's reading support, it's a hybrid approach to therapy, and it's helping students to kind of have a mindset ready for reading a book. So you use this by, you look at the cover of the book and you're gonna make predictions about what the book is about. This helps to prep the student to have their vocabulary ready and so that they're helping them to be able to organize their thoughts prior to actually reading the book. So you make these predictions, then you read the book, and then you see if your predictions were correct. So here is how we would help the student. So this is what it looks like after it's finished. I'm gonna show you how I did this. So a predictogram reading supports, kind of just set it all up here. So we're gonna let's predict the setting, the characters, the action, the problem, and the resolution to the story. Just by looking at the book, we're gonna kind of predict and let's think about, use those inferencing skills, what will happen in the story. So we're gonna match the words to the category. So the first one we're going to do is settings. So which of the following is a setting? So the student will look over these and say, I think a park is a setting. I think a beach is a setting. Okay, right. So let's see if you're correct. We're going to move away. Absolutely. A park and a beach are a setting. Great job. So then we're going to look at the characters. Which of the following is a character? So then they would say, maybe they're going to say, I think sad is a character and I think a swimmer is a character. Well, were you correct? Mm, sad's not there, but hiker is, all right? So what, what we did here is we're just helping them to determine which one is a character. We'll talk about why the one they picked isn't a character if they pick the wrong one. So then after looking at the front of the book, we want to say, okay, now which one do you think is right? So you're right, a beach is a setting, a park is a setting, but which one do you think matches this book? So then we can read the book, we can see which one matches, and then we can click on, hooray, the park is the setting. Which one do you think is right for this particular book as well? Probably the hiker and so forth and so on. So you can make this for the problem, the action and the resolution as well. So let me show you how I did this. So there's this really great website and it's called Slides Go. And that's where I found this particular setup. Um, insights go so there's all sorts of different options that you can have. You just pick on the, click on the one that you want. And then you click download right here, and mine went right here. So we're gonna open it up. We're gonna have a nice clean slate. And basically what I did was I typed in my title here. All right, and then reading support. And then you can just center it or change the colors or do whatever it is you want to do there. So you would work with that however you want that to look, right? So if you want them together or not. I got rid of this one, so I just deleted. And then here, what I did, you can see was just wrote, let's predict. So we would write, let's predict. And then fill in all these sections. So you can triple click and that will highlight the entire thing. A double click will just highlight the one word and you can go on through there. Change this to whatever you want it to say, let's match or whatever you want it to say. And then the way that I set this up was all I did was click on this, move this out of the way and I made it smaller. Same here, clicked made it smaller, just move it out of the way. I got rid of these. So the way that you can get rid of multiples at a time is just hold the shift key and then click on multiple things at a time. I'm gonna delete those, same thing, shift, delete. And then I changed all of these. So swimmer, and then I just did a right click, copy, and right click, 
paste, moved it out of the way. You can click on hiker, same again, right click paste, swimming. And you can go forth and go forward and just do all of those. And then I put them where I wanted them. So I think um, the more organized they are, rather than kind of just having them all over the page, the better, so that your student's not just looking all over the place. So sad, maybe could be, that's one of the ones that was already here, but we could use that. So once you have all of your words here, so let's, we're just going to use swimmer as an example, but you would change the words however you want them. So we have all of our words up here, and now we need to pick the setting. So we actually should probably put a setting here. So let's do, oops, oh, sorry. That's what happens when you double click it. So we don't want to do that just yet. So we're going to do park, and let's do the beach. So those are our two that we're not that will be our settings that we want to stay, right? Okay, so you'll change all these words to say what you want them to say. So change this to setting, triple click here, one, two, three, which is a setting, right? Okay, so the way that I got those to disappear was I'm gonna click on hiker, I'm gonna hold the shift key, click on swimmer, swimming, sad, anything that is not a setting, I'm gonna click on. Now, once I've clicked on all those, holding the shift key and clicking on each of them, we're gonna go up here to animations, so animations, and we're gonna do an exit effect. I happen to pick the split, that's what I picked, so that when clicked, all of those will disappear together. So that's what I did for those. And then arrange your pictures however you want them to, whether you want them big or small, if you want to rotate them, however you want those pictures to look like. So then all I did so that I wouldn't have to retype all of those words was I clicked on the, over here on the entire slide. I did Command C, which copied the whole thing. I clicked underneath, Command V as in Victor, and now I have a second one. So now I can do characters, which is a character. So what I'll do is then I'll click on the animation, which pops it up over here. I'm going to get rid of all these animations, just click until they're all gone. And now, which one is my character? So for this example, let's actually change these. So we only have one. change them to different words, okay? So a hiker and a swimmer are characters. So for this one, we would click on swimming, hold that shift key, sad, beach, all of these that are not characters, go back to animation and exit effect, and whichever one you wanna do to make it go away, this is the one that I used. And now that is finished. So then I use this particular si slide for which one is correct, so triple click, which one is right. I used this check mark, just made it smaller. And then I typed in here, park, and I made it bigger. So went to home, I think I did 40. You can make it bold by command B put it up here. We're gonna do a copy, but you could do Command C or right click copy, Command V for paste or right click paste, beach. And then what I did for this one is animations and then you want it to appear. So we want it to come onto the screen, not exit the screen. So you use one of these over here. I used a checkerboard so it'll happen right on the click. And then you would do the same thing for the characters. So click over here on this slide, Command C, put it underneath. Which one is right, a hiker or a swimmer? And this is already set up to do the animation, so we don't have to do anything there. Then any slides you don't use, you just click on and push delete. We'll just delete everything underneath, 
get rid of any slide. So you would want to do this for all of your characters, all of your problem options, your actions, the resolutions, anything that um, you want the child to predict. That's how you would do those. Whoops, and I deleted one too many. So just going to go here and do redo, get it back. So now we have predictogram, slideshow, we're going to play from start. And now you can do the same. So you'll see when we're in slideshow mode, when I click the arrow, everything's going to disappear except for my settings. Same for the characters when I click the arrow. Oh, and see, we forgot to do it for this one. So this is why we always test everything before we go into a session. So we're going to go here, click, hold that shift. We're going to go to animation, exit and the swipe effect, all done there. Now let's go back home, slideshows, play from start, and let's double check, make sure everything is working. Settings are there, characters are there, and now which one's gonna be correct? The park and the hiker. And there you go, you have predictogram for Telehealth. All right, hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too fast. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.